Hi, I'm Sue. And I'm Julia. And welcome to Sticks and Stones Podcast. Today on episode 40 of Sticks and Stones Podcast, we'll be catching up with all of you and announcing the winners of our 2014 Root Cow. We will be seeing what Sue and Julia have been working away at during these snowy days. And for our DIY today, we're going to make fun crafts with nail polish. Join us! Long time. A long time. Yeah. It's it, hard to get out of our houses in all the snow. I think the winter. Well, it wasn't even snow, but it's like <laughs> life. Oh, it's always life. It's so, I don't know. I have no excuses. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I have no excuses. Hey, do you have three of them? Okay. <laughs> three children excuses. But in any case, it's been too long. So thanks for sticking around and exactly. all of you who are still watching us. Yes. Thanks for coming back to watch. So, but we, you know, we missed you guys. I missed this. Yeah, it was, it's fun. Yeah. So, hopefully. Well, we, were, we were feeling podcast guilt, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> I know, I'd go watch other people and be like, oh, I need to do this. <laughs> do this. It's been since October, so, yeah. But, you know, these things happen. Yeah. So here we are. Yeah, we're human and we move on and we got some fun stuff to do today. We do, we need to announce a bunch of winners. We do, because the uh, Whip Cal ended for 2014, and I would thank everybody who participated all year long. We had people who put something in every month. That's awesome. So our last two winners were due for November and for December. Our last two winners are um, number five, who is LME Call, uh, LME C-O-L-L. She won for November, and awesome. same old knit won for December. And I have two choices. Um, one is I have a set of Patton's Croix sock, which is kind of fun. This is like my colors of the month because those are really pretty. You need color this time of year. Yeah, yeah, I like the turquoise in there. Yeah, so uh, this is one of the prizes, and the other one will be a pattern from my Ravelry store. So whoever contacts me first gets to choose. And then the other person gets to choose what's left. And you do get to choose whatever pattern you want. Fun. Yeah, so you better so. hurry back and yeah. get a hold of Julia because she's got some fun patterns. Yeah, so that's that's the end. And uh, I think even though I did not do as many whips as I needed to, <laughs> I did get some done. So thank you for the motivation. Me, I'm still working on that washcloth. <laughs> <laughs> Which you will get done. I have someday. Faith in you. Someday. It I will, do. It will happen. Yeah. And so. then I'm going to frame it. I'm never going to use it. I'm going to frame it. My kids have been knitting over Christmas. My nine year old made a thneed, she called it, a big fat, like super sparkly scarf thing. And then. <laughs> The ten-year-old's been making dishcloths. Everybody clots. needs a thneed. They, yeah, that's why she did it. She called it that. It just looked like it. It's from the Lorax. It is. Everybody needs a thneed. Yeah, so she made her own thneed. Um, and then dishcloths. We have lots of dishcloths around now because they've you been you never have enough dishcloths. Mm-hmm. The kids are out knitting me. <laughs> it's because they have nothing else to do with all these snow days. <laughs> we've done everything else we could possibly do in my house. And all that's left is knitting, so they've learned, which is good. Yeah. So what have you been working on? Um, well, I brought, because it's been so long, I brought just one thing from each month, like the big thing. Um, there's a lot of little things. I did a lot of little Christmas presents and stuff like that. Um, but the big stuff that I'm pretty proud of. Um, first, this is back from, I showed you guys this back in October. This was my water dance shawl, and it is oh. officially written up, released, and available for purchase on Revelry. Nice. So... Um, I think it turned out really neat, and I thought yeah, that it's so pretty. the test knitters who did it um, used lots of different colors, so there's pictures up online now of different variations, and um, I'm, it's got a little fuzz on it, but I'm really pleased with it, and I think that uh, it'll be a nice thing for the the spring, like it reminds me of butterflies. And it does. It looks just like a butterfly. Yeah. So, again, Very it's pretty. Water Dance, and it's in my Ravelry store, so nice. you guys can go and pick it up. Let's hold it up against the wall because you can really see the lace better when it's up against like that. Yes. So, yeah. Nice. So that's the, that was my October, November thing. And then I finished, finally, my Ashlyn sweater. Ooh. In purple. I've seen you wear this. I have worn it a few times. It's got the, the lace down the front here. And honestly, 
this is the kind of thing I say to myself, why do I take so long? Because when I picked it up again, I literally put it down for a year and I had one and a half sleeves to go. <laughs> and once I finally picked it up again, it was done like in a week. Sometimes you just have to be inspired. You know, you get tired of a project yeah, and we're distracted. You just, yeah, it's <laughs> that's just, what I do. There's nothing wrong with moving on and coming back. Yeah. So, but I'm really happy with it. It fits me well. Um, I'll put it on over my other sweater here. <laughs> you can see how well it fits me now. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, it looks really nice. The only thing I didn't do is put the tie on here because I wasn't sure if I wanted to to have a tie or if I want to. Put a button or what I want to do yet with the closure. Here's a vintage brooch. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have many of those lying in my. I don't have your vintage, vintage room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, vintageness. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I finished Ashlyn, and this is an Amy Herzog design, and it's done in Madeline Tosh in the Hutura colorway. Wow. You remembered all of that. A lot of things in my head here. Wow. <laughs> Um, and then the last two are ones I did, like December, end of December, January time frame. Um, this is called Extinction. That's so fun that it's wavy. Yeah, and it's um, three colors. This one, I don't know where it came from. It's just a dark brown. And then the <laughs> middle one is a Malabrigo that I got in the swap a long time ago. And this top one I dyed myself, but wasn't sure if I'd ever have anything to go with it. That's really fun. That's nice they, color choices, though. Yeah, they kind of go together. They gradient, gradient. They do go together very well. And I have enough left over. I'm going to make a hat to match. Fun. So, they get that's extinction. I think that was a. I'm pretty sure it's a free pattern. So it was fun. It was easy. Not a lot of thinking going on with that. And then the last one. This one is so the beautiful. Fancy one. So beautiful. I have to cut the ends off yet, but it's blocked and ready. If you help me hold it. This is the Stephen West Exploration Station, um, done in Tosh Sock in four different colors. Yeah, it's so pretty. And I finished it yesterday, so. Just in time for podcastiness. Yeah. Can't see us behind it, but yeah, I'm I really. I can look through the whole thing <laughs> and I can, can see you. See you. <laughs> Stephen Tour is coming to our area next week, so I so made it so I can wear it to the talk and show Stephen West his, his pattern. So I'll put it on. It's huge and cozy, and I love it. Nice. It's probably too big for that. Do you think it's too big for that? No, I think it's perfect. Yeah, all the color, because you need color this time of year. You do. You, do. you really do. You do. So, so that's that's the big stuff that I've been doing, and then there's you know little things, hats and stuff, and gloves and. But this is it. You're always busy. I have to be, because if I don't, I'll go crazy. <laughs> I need the, I need my meditation. <laughs> there you go. So, so how about you? What have you been doing? Uh, I made some Christmas presents. I made little birds that I have a picture of. Um, got some needle felting stuff for Christmas. So uh, during the break, I was doing that. We were away, so I could actually whew, have time to do that. Uh, this guy is a little... Uh, he was going to be a fox, but now I'm feeling like his face looks like a rabbit. Yeah, I agree. So he might end up being a rabbit. I mean, that's the thing about needle felting is you just kind of wing it. And sometimes it works. The birds that I made were supposed to be, you know, very straight. And one of them, his head's like this. <laughs> and it's really cute because he looks at the other bird. And that was not my intention. Yeah. But you just, you have to, I mean, I guess that's the thing about needle felting. You have to work with the wool. Mm -hmm. And it goes where it wants to go. Um, although the other day I... We were looking for the TV remote, and I pulled the cushions <laughs> off, and I pulled out a, a needle, oh, a needle felting needle. Oh no. My son said, what is that? I was like, mm, it's a needle felting needle. We don't really want that in the sofa. I have no idea how it got in there. Obviously. sharp on your butt. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and the other thing that I did recently with Valentine's Day coming up is um, we had a snow day, and so we were doing crafty, crafty things. So I did these with perler beads, and I'm going to attach them together probably with fishing oh, line cute. to make this little cute okay. lovebird kind of thing going on. But they were fun. I found this pattern on Pinterest. You know, you can get some really cool um, pearl or bead patterns that aren't super simplistic. Like this one's just, I winged it, but yeah. this, ah, I didn't wing these. <laughs> but, I mean, they're, they're, they don't have any wings. <laughs> they're really cool. They are. They're and so looking. you can find some really cute. neat pearl or bead patterns. Of course, you know, I'm thinking of pearl or beads as tiny. Mm -hmm. And then when I did this, I was like, wow, these beards are huge. Yeah. So. They turned out neat. We I think I just vacuumed up most of ours. <laughs> they were all over my kid's floor. And I did a thorough cleaning. And 
a lot of them disappeared. <laughs> well, I did these, uh, I did these, you know, I looked at this pattern online and the bird was green, so mm -hmm. it was easy to do the first one, but then I wanted to use the same colors but make it different, and it was really hard to be like, wait, this color is actually this color. Okay. What am I doing again? <laughs> so, they look cute, though. Yeah, they're fun. This one is a little brighter and more fun, I think, but anyway, so we'll see. Yeah. There's a lot of German ones that are, that are, and Japanese that, you know, like, you, there's no, um, you can't read the directions. Okay. But a lot of Japanese and a lot of German. It's like a 3 We got a 3D printer for Christmas, and the first one we put together it was all in Chinese. So he had to literally, <laughs> like, try and figure out how to, to do it, and then the motor didn't work. Oh. Or something, the fan, something was wrong with it, and it was unfortunately not anything he did. It was just, it was broken when we got it. And we didn't know it. So he sent it away and got one that was in English. And <laughs> it works much better. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Yeah, so that's been kind of fun. And, and actually that leads well into what we're going to do for our DIY. Because the, the 3D things we've been making are done in plastic. And they don't look very pretty. So um, I decided to try putting nail polish on them to make them look better. So did you make that? I did. Yeah, not the, not the necklace part, but the charm. Oh, that's so cool. And I just painted it in a brown and then put a gold layer over it. It looks like wood. I thought it was wood. Yeah, no, it's it's not. It's that is really cool. So I'll put a close-up picture of it. But we've been playing that around. Like really we have cool. a gargoyle now that's gray. That's not nail polish, but like spray painted. And we've just been having a good time printing stuff and playing with it. That's exciting. Yeah. My daughter made a birdhouse. We painted the little bird blue and the cage is all gold. and. Yeah. So did it print out just in one color? It's white. The, the filament that we have is just plain white. So it's pretty easy to cover. But that kind of made me think, what else can you do with nail polish? Since it works so well on this. Yeah. Did some so pins. that was done with nail polish? Yeah. Yep. Oh, fun. Yeah. So I did some Pinterest searching. <laughs> did you guys remember how well we get along with Pinterest? <laughs> sometimes it works so, and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So the DIY today is going to be another bit of an experiment. You know, I tried it. <laughs> Speaking of Pinterest, uh, my neighbor mentioned to me that some people make brownies in a waffle maker. And I was, she's like, I've seen it on Pinterest. I was like, oh, well, I got to try that. Oh, of course, my. I don't look up any directions. Let me tell you about the brownies I was seeing. <laughs> scraping out of my waffle maker. They were very good, oh but I they were all in tiny pieces and we just ate them on ice cream. Oh, like brownie crumble? Yeah, but when you look at the pictures, they're already beautiful, like little, beautiful little waffle brownies. Yes, I saw somebody make eggs in a waffle maker too. Yeah. And that just seems like it would be a mess to me, but... Yeah, it seems like you're trying too hard. Yeah. The waffle maker and the brownies, you're getting them in half the time. Oh. That's sort of the point, right? Because the waffles yes. take like you know, five minutes right. instead of 35. So right. I get that. But so anyway, yeah, I don't know if I'll try it again. <laughs> it, was a, it was a mess. Well, we're going to attempt to make marbled paper with Fun. nail polish today. And if that doesn't work, we might come up with something else. <laughs> <laughs> that will be our first attempt. <laughs> um, so come on back and join us and let's see what we can do. Fun. Can we? <laughs> For today's DIY, you're going to obviously need some nail polish, and I brought a lot of different colors. Um, it, it's relatively easy to find colors you're looking for, but you can also mix them a little bit and have some fun like with regular paint. Um, for the marbling, you're going to need either cardstock or watercolor paper, some scissors to make the design shape you want it to be, toothpicks to arrange the nail polish in a marble fashion and then a container that you're not going to use for food and a little bit of water down inside. Um, it's also a good idea to have some nail polish remover and cotton balls because once you put your fingers into it you're going to get um, polish on you. We also have here a couple other things we're going to try to paint today. Uh, here's a plastic pencil box and then a um, tin just to kind of see what will happen. Okay, so for today's project, I'm going to try these colors here. I have a teal and a coral and then this kind of an iridescent blue teal here. And I have watercolor paper and cardstock and we're going to kind of see how this goes. Um, so first, first make sure that you're using a good quality nail polish, one that's 
not going to just peel off. Um, I'm assuming that it will soak into the paper, but you don't want your work to just kind of peel off and uh, be gone. So you need to pour a little bit in. <laughs> woo! Uh, woo! See the first lesson. <laughs> the Pinterest says make sure that your polish floats. Now some of it sunk to the bottom and some of it is floating and spreading out quite a bit. So um, I'm not sure what that means, but we're going to try it anyway. And so here's a different, that was a Revlon. This is Claire's. So let's see if Claire's makes a difference here. <laughs> Pour a little bit in. Um, this one's a little thicker. So maybe it'll, yeah, this one is thicker and it's actually staying on top better. So I'm just going to put a few drops on and then I'll swirl it around. <laughs> the last one I'll use this blue and this one is a sinful color, which I see at all the grocery stores lately. We'll pour a little bit of this in. This one is also a little bit thinner than the Claire's. Zoom. Of the three, the Simple Colors appears to be the best at staying on the surface. So now I got a toothpick and I'm just going to kind of, woo. And the Revlon's already dry. <laughs> I'm going to swoosh this around a little bit and see what happens. And now I'm going to take the cardstock and I'm just going to drop it on top. And again, we're going to see what happens. Let that float for a second. Um, actually, it took all the nail polish, except for that little bit I just pulled off. And it looks kind of cool. I don't know if you guys can see that. You put your drying rack right there. Yeah, but that's actually kind of neat looking. It's got some texture to it because of the layer, the little bit that dried already. Um, I'm wondering if the water might be too cool, if that helped it to dry too fast. So um, we're going to do it again and we're going to warm the water up. Okay, so we're back and I got some warmer water. It's a little bit warmer than room temperature. And I'm going to try again and let's see what happens. This one I'm going to pour a little bit slower. I was kind of surprised how quickly it came out of the bottle last time. But it's definitely, the Revlon is definitely thinner than the other. And it went to the bottom again. Alright, so there's the Revlon. Here's the Claire's. I don't know if you guys could see before, when I went to move it, the um, nail polish had actually created a film on the top, so it was it was drying. Um, so you may want to consider using a slower drying formula for this. That might make a difference. <laughs> this one is definitely the best, both times the sinful polish. Okay, so all of them are in and again the Revlon is hard already. It's like it's like a film. That's really interesting. But the other ones are still kind of loose, so I'm just going to smoosh them around a little. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, and again with the paper, drop it on and we'll see what happens. The edges kind of curl up a little bit, so I'm just waiting for it to Give me some room. All right, this time we have more film here. It does make a, a very interesting, almost saran light, saran wrap like look, and kind of it gives me a mixed media feel 
which is not quite what we were going for <laughs> with marbled paper because the ones I saw online were completely smooth and didn't have any layering at all. But I think it does look really cool nonetheless. So um, give it a try, I guess, and play around with it. See how your paper turns out. And if you get anything interesting, post it up and let me take a look. I think this is kind of cool. And we're going to play some more too. All right, what are we going for here? I really don't know. I'm going to try this watercolor paper this time and see if oh, it makes a difference. I need to cut this paper. Could I have the scissors? Oh, yeah. This is what happened um, when I used the toothpick and just kind of pulled the film off. It, it's like a little cocoon almost, and I'm kind of wondering if it will harden into something we could use for a bead. Because we wouldn't want to waste anything. No. <laughs> No, and I'm going to try a whole bunch of different kinds here and see. This, one one, is, this is a quick dry, but... Yeah, this one's Maybelline Express Finish. Ooh, this one goes right to the bottom. Ooh. It's not even staying on the top Yeah, mine's not either. That spread out like it was touching acid. Although, when we were playing with it before, when you... No. Oh, look at that. It's just the way it explodes. There's something in there that is... Makes a film. Maybe yeah. that's what makes nail polish hard. Maybe. And this is just plain tap water. It's not like we have anything in it. Um, this is a really old CoverGirl nail slick, so I'm going to try. This one's Wet and Wild Mega Last. <laughs> Salon nail polish. Yep, this one's not doing it either. Yeah, neither is this. It no, drops this right to the bottom. This one is actually floating now. I think the colors, that. oh, wow. yeah, mine's doing the same thing. It's like it suddenly just goes, <laughs> interesting. This is like a Rorschach test here, <laughs> and it's changing. I see a ghost chasing. <laughs> I have some cover girl out He has two eyes. There's a ghost. Oh, yeah. It's chasing another ghost. It's chasing, what are the name of those guys from Harry Potter? I don't even know. Dementors. Dementors. I think... I don't know. I think maybe the longer lasting ones. It's getting stinky in here. It is. Yeah, make sure you have ventilation. <laughs> it's funny how some of them will drop right to the bottom, but then they start to stay. I don't understand. This podcast is going to be a little out there because we're going to be loopy from the fumes. This is Mary Kay. Yeah, these have a film on them too. Now it's stuck to my toothpick. I wonder if we're taking too long, if we need to move faster. How fast can you move? It's nail polish. Yeah. Well, I think I said that the the instructions said to work, you know, to make sure the water was warm so it wouldn't dry too quickly, but it actually didn't even say warm. It said room temperature. So I'm a little, I don't know. All right, last one, and this is a Sally Hansen. Ooh, that's quite a color. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, this one pulled up the skin, too, but it looks cool. It does. This yeah. one, the Sally Hansen poured very nicely, but it, it poured it on top of some other ones. You know, I'm just going to go crazy with the toothpick. <laughs> this is watercolor paper, so we'll see if that makes a difference. I don't know. Hmm. I can see the marbling there. Yeah, I wonder if you have to kind of scrape off the film and if it leaves the color behind. Because that the, is kind of the film, too. Yeah. It, it, I think they film look 11. really interesting. What if I, uh, I'm yes, yeah, I'm all filmed. It, yeah, oh, here we go. That came off in chunks. Some of it didn't even stick to the watercolor paper. Huh, interesting. And the green is like saran wrap again. Yeah. I'm not really sure what we're going for. Yeah, well, in the pictures, <laughs> in the pictures, it looked like the, it soaked into the paper and left just a color behind. That cardstock? Yes, it soaks into the cardstock much more. Interesting. Then it soaks into. Oh the, my god, that's so cool! Yeah. Yeah, it definitely soaked into the cardstock better than the. That's that's the watercolor paper, and I don't like it. But this is my watercolor paper, and it worked okay. Yeah. I think it need, it definitely needs to soak in versus sit on top. 
So we are going to try a different kind of cardstock. I got green going on here. What goes with green? White. French manicure? Sure. Alright, this is a filmed over... So like this is like oak tag. Oh, okay. Right? I don't know. I just found it. Remember oak tag when you were little? That's what teachers used for everything. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, it's a little thicker, I think, than the cardstock, but it's not as thick as the watercolor paper. I don't know why it's called oak tag. These two are working really well and staying on top. Yeah, they are. What are those? This one's Naline French Manicure. Okay. Manufacture Francais. <laughs> this one is OPI Nail Lacquer, the green one. Okay. It's a little baby one. It looks, um... Here's another OPI. Yeah, that didn't stick at all. Oh, interesting. You know what? This paper is actually crazy old. Well, I wonder, because this is also completely filmed over, if I needed a fresh... It's possible this paper is from 1964, because it oh. says 6.54. <laughs> it is possible, because that is actually a family heirloom. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you're, it's there to use, but okay. I'm just telling you, it's old and it's... So it may know, not be very porous. It's cured. Yeah, I'm wondering if porosity is going to be the key. It this does sort of have... kind of cool, though. It is sort of... Um, um, this is almost like it has a film on it, you know? Yeah. Alright, I'll try this So, again. OPI seems to work pretty well. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the professional grade ones appear to be a little bit better than the drugstore variety. Although it is still, it is, gets filmy, but not so much so. The green really didn't, the green's been sitting there for a while, too. Yeah, that's swirled up pretty nice. It's not very bright colors, but yeah, it doesn't seem to grab on like those other ones. This is Salma Hayek. Her I didn't brand. even know that she had nail polish. Yeah, it's called Nuance. I am is so out of it? the loop. We'll see. This is a little metallic. Maybe it'll work well on this pink paper. Ooh, maybe. Oh, look at that. It's like completely iridescent. <coughs> That's interesting. I could just dump the nail polishes in the water and watch them do their thing. That's really interesting in of itself. Okay, pink. Let's see how it works on the pink. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the nail polish is all starting to get to me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at yours curl up. Yeah. Well, that would have marbled had I had more than one color in it. That looks really it's cool. It's kind of interesting here. This that way. All right, I'm going to try one more. And then I think I'm going to paint something else. I was really pretty impressed with how nail polish covered, like, on plastic. I didn't... Oh, that's neat. Huh. I didn't expect it to... To, I mean, I guess it makes sense. It works on your nails. Why so wouldn't it work on plastic? But I didn't expect Probably it to. Probably because you're not made of plastic. Yeah, but your nails are of similar, like the surface of it is similar, if that makes sense. Like it's a, yeah. the smoothness of it. The smoothosity. Smoothosity. Interesting. Also wondering if maybe having a slight film on it will help the other stuff. I don't know. It's all a mystery. Maybelline Color Show. Oh, here's a symbol. <laughs> Be interesting to see if these peel off though when they the ones that are textured if they peel off when they dry. Or if it's too Yeah. Dry. Okay, I'm going to put this one on the purple side. Whoa, look at that. Oh, that one's cool. Zinful appears to be a good brand. And it's pretty cheap. Is it? Like $1.99 or something crazy like that. Huh. If it's the same one I'm thinking of that they just started carrying at our grocery store. Yeah. Yeah, it was $1.99. Wow. 
Okay. I had to buy red nail polish for a party. I had never worn na red nail polish in my life. And, you know, you think it's pretty simple to buy red nail polish. Look how that Oh made my gosh. The other one. It just kind of sh swooshed it away. That is crazy. Like it's almost making the purple disappear. It's very unhappy with each other. <laughs> that one just grew an amoeba. <laughs> Yeah, don't stick your brush into the water. I'm not sure what that would do to it, but I don't think it would be good. That's Interesting. so weird. This feels like a science experiment. Yeah. Well, the stuff sure on top of the film lasted on that one. That you could tell something about your nail polish by putting it in water. I just don't know what. Yeah, I don't know. So I don't we go. see something for the kids to do for their science fair down the road. I don't know, I'm pretty happy with the results of these papers. I'm not sure that they are what what they are supposed to be. Like if I look at the actual post, they were doing like glassware, like putting a glass in it, it would stick. Wow. And it, it looked beautiful. And the, these are not what I saw, but it's certainly very interesting looking. Yeah. All right, well this is a closer up look of what I painted. Um, on my 3D plastic printed thing and I ended up using this brown here, the Revlon brown, and then I covered it with this gold which gave it kind of an iridescent look. So it, it was kind of fun playing with the colors um, in that way that I could layer them and have them look really interesting. Um, and it did give it almost a wood grain kind of a look. It did. I really thought that was wood yeah. when you came in. We're going to try to get a wood based um, filament too. Fun. Yeah. Is it actually made from wood or it just looks like wood? It's got wood parts in it. Interesting. So should I take it out or wait till it's I totally soaked? That'll, that's interesting though with the, ble the green and the purple. I think you may have a winner. Whoa! Oh that's neat. That's pretty crazy. Like I said, I can't wait to see after it dries what it's... Yeah. And this, you can definitely see the whole little film covered the whole paper. Yeah. Because it looks shiny and the water is beating on it. That's crazy. Wow, that was interesting. Look at that. looks like Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> see? I, I do see I it. His, no, <laughs> this big hat. <laughs> it's just like... Drug induced. I've been sniffing too much um, nail polish. Yeah. Look at Santa! <laughs> Santa Rorschach. Alright, well, we're gonna. <laughs> we're gonna stop while we're ahead and still upright. <laughs> so we spent a little. <laughs> we spent a little too much time with the nail polish, so we're gonna be going now. <laughs> but uh, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Have fun. And we'll see you again next month. Bye. Bye.